Welcome to Long Live Baseball. So glad you joined us. My name's Seth. Happy Bobby Bonilla Day. Uh, on the Happy show we talk Bobby about Bonilla Day. On the show we talk everything from NL Central to the All Star Game to what the heck was Alex Reyes doing with the massage gun in the bullpen? It was getting a little close to his. Um... So. Uh, as always, oh, and uh, Lucas Giolito versus uh, Josh Donaldson. Uh, get him some boxing gloves and put him in a ring, right? Yeah. So, as always, I'm joined by uh, my friend. He's a Cubs fan. You'll have to excuse that. Uh, Mike Jones, how you doing, Mike? Doing great, Seth. Doing great. Uh, yeah, I, I what's this last thing that you were talking about? I hate to go to the last thing first. Was there a fight of some sort or what? What? Uh... Well, as you know, they're cracking down on the sticky stuff. Oh. And uh, Lucas Giolito, his RPMs have gone down, gotcha. like way down. And Josh Donaldson hit a home run off of him. And he's shouting as he crosses home plate. It's not sticky anymore. It's not sticky anymore. <laughs> Josh so, Donaldson. And so yeah. uh, that that made Lucas Giolito a little, that hurt his feelings a little bit. So. Well, yeah. Now, you know, I was looking, it's funny because sometimes, you know, we get on the YouTube and we look at videos and things of that nature. And, and uh, what was the one that I was looking at last night? Oh, I was watching the one about uh, uh, Bryce Harper, and I can't remember who was on the mound. Strickland, maybe. Maybe I. And I'm and sure. uh, and because uh, who did Strickland pitch for back? Was it the Dodgers? I want to say the Giants. Yeah, maybe the Giants. Yeah, and uh, anyway, the the uh, you know uh, showboat um, Harper is at home plate and he, he hits one home run and, and, you know, he kind of watches it for a second, a little bit of a bat flip, nothing egregious or anything like that. And then the next one is like, they show the freeze frame of it. He hits the, and this is last season. I mean, this, this is old news, but he hits the, he hits one down the right field line and everybody, they pause it, you know, it's John boy media or whatever. They pause it mm -hmm. and the pitcher, the catcher, the umpire, and Harper are all standing there staring, you know, at the ball. And and it ends up being a home run. And and so Harper rounds first base and Strickland yells something at him. And Harper's like, What? You know? Yeah. And he goes around and then and then two and a half years later, when they meet each other again, Strickland's throwing at him. And then Harper charges the mound, you know? So you, I guess what I'm saying is you have that to look forward, Josh Donaldson, the next time you face, right? I mean, I was watching a, I would think a Cleveland Indians documentary, like their teams in the mid nineties and how good they were with like Manny Ramirez and Eddie Murray and Albert Bell and all those guys. And I could go on and on Omar Vizquel and uh, Omar Vizquel came out with a book while he was still playing. And I think Jose Mesa had gone to another team, but he talked about Jose Mesa in the book. And apparently he said some things that ticked uh, Jose Mesa off. Yeah. So from then until the, the end of Jose Mesa's career, Jose Mesa threw at Omar Vizquel. Like every did not time. even want to face just every single time he pl punk plucked him. Wow. And I was like, unbelievable and and then he says like yep i did yeah. <laughs> it was a hundred percent intentional yeah so well the, the the strickland thing if you get a chance to watch it that one's an interesting one because it was the giants because buster posey was catching and and buster posey claimed that um strickland told him he was gonna plunk him and and he didn't want him to stop harper from charging the mound and so when you see the video of it, Harper starts charging the mound. It's the one where he took his helmet off and threw it at him and missed mm -hmm. wildly. 
and slipped <laughs> out of his hand. But yeah. Buster Posey's standing behind home plate. Like, he doesn't ever go get involved. And in the, the bench is clear. Buster Posey never moves. Hmm. And who would uh, who would the Giants ace have been? Uh, Baumgartner, Bum, maybe? Baumgartner. Yeah. He, he actually walks down into the towards the tunnel instead of going and getting on the field. That's what they thought of Strickland. Wow. At that point. Like I guess he said, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw at him and everybody was like, Oh, you, you don't throw at him for that, you know. <laughs> yeah, two and a half years later. Yeah, or so you know, I don't know if it's two and a half years, but yeah. it was two you know, two hundred and some games. May as, or, may as well been. Or days or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But uh, I might, I may have been, that might have been hyperbole. I don't know. And then, of course, you got Hector Santiago, right? Yeah. First to, uh, pitcher, first pitcher in MLB, in the MLB to get tossed for substance abuse. Yeah, to be wrongly accused of um, using a substance uh, that's allowed and and delivered to the pitchers at the start of every game and sits behind the which begs another question i'd like to know in the history of major league baseball or modern day major league baseball there's a lot of crap on the back side of the mound there's a mm -hmm. rosin bag there's a sometimes there's a, a cleat cleaner yeah. there's a you know um you know i'm sure there's a jar of uh, pine tar uh spider tack you know puddle you know whatever else is back there but i, I wonder gary cole's ever... mad at mad at the the grounds crew well why there wasn't the puddle of spider tech back there like there always is <laughs> you got to get him his spider tech so the so my i guess my question is have those things ever interfered in a game has a ball ever hit the rosin bag has huh. a it, yeah because you don't I don't think you ever see it because it probably hits the mound first and then goes over the yeah. back side of the mound is kind of protected from that, I suppose. But I think it's an interesting trivia question. Yeah. We'll have to contact our research department and have them get on it. We got uh, a research department. Well, that's you and me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, it's sitting right there. I mean, it's possible. I would assume that a ball could, uh, a, a high chopper could go over the mound and hit the rosin bag or something and just lay there. I don't know if it's just ever happened. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If the, probably now that we're talking about it, it'll happen in the next couple of days. Yeah. We've we'll, breathed we'll it see. into existence with right. just our, the very mention of it. Like, huh, I wonder if something like that could happen. And then yeah. there we go. Just like that yeah. video you showed me last night of that softball game. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. The John Boy thing right. that you sent me. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, that That's clear. First of all, if you don't know, <laughs> softball, it's a high school playoff game, for the love of God. Right. Uh, the girl clear hits a foul ball, almost hits her coach in the third base box. That's how foul the ball is. So yeah. if you're not sure about the, the rule – if you're not sure what the rule is, you're lucky because I'm a resident expert in in the rules of softball and baseball. Uh, that's a foul ball. And on a foul ball, the ball is a dead ball. Uh, and in softball in particular, until the girl possesses the ball in the circle and the umpire deems the ball ready for play by going play. Right. He's got to do that. Right. Or the ball's live again. Otherwise, it's just a dead ball. The home plate umpire. Home plate. He's got to play. Yep. And when you're watching this play happen, and what happens is the girl goes and retrieves the foul ball, throws it to the girl in the in the, the pitcher, overthrows it. First, first, if I'm not mistaken. The third baseman. First, huh? I think first. I think first throws it to the third baseman. Third baseman then throws it to the pitcher and overthrows her. I think, but I could be wrong. Yeah. But there's runners on base. There's runners on second and third, I believe, or the bases loaded. The bases were loaded, yeah. Yeah, so the coach, all of a sudden, you see him send the girl on third, and everybody's thinking, what's going on? And the girls start rounding the bases, and everybody scores because of these two wild throws on a dead ball. 
it's a dead ball yeah you never have and like they the umpire and there's three umpires there three yep and they stick with that all three runs score on this play it was unbelievable yeah they had unbelievable a meeting, to watch. they had a meeting of the umpire crew yeah after it was the play was over and they said yes the runs count unbelievable yeah. i don't understand i do not understand that i've never seen that anything like that in my life so how's it differ in baseball then foul ball it's the same thing the umpire's got to put right? the umpire's got to put the ball in play yeah he's got to be back on the mound in that yeah game. And you'll see it. A good umpire will always do it. That's a good habit to get into because I've, in my time, I got a little lazy and, uh, and just, you know, I didn't go play or say it or do anything. I just stood back there like, okay, obviously we're playing. So it's kind of took the Angel Hernandez approach at it. (laughs) Just let it go. And yeah, just, just let it happen. Just eh, whatever. I'm Angel Hernandez. Uh, and so what happened is a coach noticed that I was doing this. And in my opinion, this is kind of a Bush league move. Right. But he intentionally balked because the ball's not in play. So there cannot be a balk on a dead ball. Right. He intentionally right. balked and threw over to first to see if he could get a free out. Ah. See if I would not call balk yeah. and to see if we would call the kid at first out. Yeah. And I the, immediately when I said Bach, his immediate response to me was, you didn't put the ball in play. You can't have, right. did you put the ball in play? And I said, no, I didn't. <laughs> You're absolutely so, right. And so, so I went and talked to my base umpire and I told him, all right, here's what's going to happen. I messed up. I didn't put the ball in play. Uh, people are going to be mad at me, but this is what we're going with because he's absolutely right. You can't have a Bach on a dead ball. Yeah. And so, and the other, the other coach went absolutely ballistic on me. Like, yeah. how is that not a buck? I said, okay, you're, you're jumping to step four before you've considered step one. Yeah. Uh, I did not put the ball in play. We cannot have a buck on a dead ball. Right. I have to, I have to put the ball in play and yeah. I didn't do it. So that's my fault. Right. It, it, was it right for him to do that? I don't think so, but yeah. Well, you were in a lose, lose, lose situation because yeah. if he'd have got the guy, if he'd have picked off the guy at first mm-hmm. in the same scenario, then the same coach who was getting on you for calling a ball would have been saying, we threw him out. Yeah. We threw him out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you'd have said, well, I didn't put the ball in play. And he just said, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And then the opposing mm-hmm. coach would have been furious. Yeah. 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 That's. Yeah. No, it's uh umpire is a fun job, man. You got to yeah, try absolutely. it sometime. Well, I, I, I still keep, continue to make fun of Angel Hernandez. Um, well, you know, so Hector Santiago, mm-hmm. going back to him, how do you feel about the fact that, you know, they glove, they, they bag his glove. And then that, that's the end of it. The umpire's decision to eject him is upheld and he gets a 10-game suspension. Well, and don't you love that it's Hector bleeping Santiago that gets the blank, like that gets, yeah. that's, let's face it. He's the scapegoat for this whole thing. Because right. the commissioner's office, we got somebody. Look, see, we got H- Hector Santiago. Yeah. Okay. With what? What? Though? What did he do? He apparently had rosin. He, he claims it's just rosin. Rosin. And, and when you rosin. watch his post game press conference, yep. I feel it's pretty genuine. Yeah. He's like, I I was just using rosin and it got inside my glove, but technically the rule is you can't have rosin inside your glove apparently, and so they got him on a technicality, which I, I think I is. Think, I don't even think the rule is that what they said. Yeah, I think so. You can't have rosin inside your glove. Which, I mean, if you're putting it on your wrist like this, like Lance Lynn, like like all over your body. <laughs> well, sure. Like, it's going to get inside your glove. Tack, even where the spider tack goes. Yeah, I mean, this right. is, he's got a section for everything, probably. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I just... Uh, 
it's i mean it, if, it, is was there any tangible data that they looked at like oh this is hector santiago's spin rate before and after like you could no. look at with lucas giolito to determine whether or not he might be cheating no like there's all all they looked for was the the sticky but, substance without even really considering why is it sticky uh what could it be could it be a piece of bubble gum right uh and it's right. if it's just rosin rosin's le- a legal substance legal and of course exactly. it's going to get inside the glove so yeah like why doesn't the league tell us what's a legal substance the, it's too subjective there's no yes. objectivity to it the umpires get together hey there appears to be something on the inside if you ever you know that little pad well i don't even know what that's made of sheepskin you know what what's what's that little pad made of that that the velcro that tightens your glove you know what i'm talking about yeah there, there's sheepskin or there's some kind of fabric there i don't know it used to be sheepskin i think or uh you know mm-hmm. i don't know what it was but but that's where they find the sticky stuff well maybe that had something to do with it too that's why it feels sticky because it's on that whatever that stuff is i mean i it's just ridiculousness yeah well it's and in the video um so rosin's a legal substance right but apparently you can't have it inside your glove whatever that's what's going to happen when when a guy's sweating and when a guy's rubbing rosin all over his forearms yeah some's going to get in the glove and my instinct my gut instinct probably my tinfoil hat uh theory here is that he's a scapegoat mike I don't, yeah, because you know, there are other guys out there, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. well, Giolito, I mean, Garrett Cole, where if you gave him a 10 game suspension, first of all, those fans aren't going to be able to watch that guy pitch now, right? And ticket sales probably aren't as great. And then you don't get to show those games. You don't get it. And I'm not, DeGrom's not one of the guys that spin rate has fallen off, but. Right. There, I think what's evident now is there are clearly guys who were cheating and basically got away with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but how long and, has that been going on? I mean, let's let's yeah. be honest about this. Two years ago, and I've been giving you grief about this for the for a long time, and now we know why the ball stuck to Yachty's chest protector. Yeah. It didn't have anything to do with Yachty's chest protector. That's, that's, I mean, that's what we were talking about back then. No, it was a sticky ball. It yeah. was the pitchers, you know, and, and now just yesterday I saw a tweet and somebody said it had taken a close up picture of a catcher's glove where there was all this discoloration over here. So, you know, we're searching the pitchers, yeah. <laughs> but the catchers are now the ones that are, okay, I'll put the sticky stuff on the outside of my glove they're not searching that yeah you know and i'll get a little bit and put it on the ball and throw it back to you and you know and then when they search you i don't have anything i don't you know i mean it's a it's a circus yeah it's a circus and thank you yeah the the head ringleader is uh marching in line is rob manfred yeah um so we how about this how about happy bobby bonilla day uh bobby bonilla gets paid 1.19 million dollars until the year 2035 as a result of the a contract he signed with the mets i believe in the 90s i'm not quite sure exactly when uh but this leads me to the question and maybe we can get specific with the with the cubs contract or not but what are some of the best or worst? Because that's clearly, as far as a player goes, one of the best contracts a player's oh. ever signed yeah. in the history of the league, probably. Yeah. Uh, what's What are some of the best or worst contracts in the history of baseball? And I have this Bleacher Report article there if you want to look at that. Sure, um, sure. But some of the ones that come up on this are like Cespedes, uh let's see buster posey which i guess i guess so he's getting paid a lot of money but he's having a good year this year i know he's uh david price is making 30 million dollars to come out of the bullpen 
I don't even know who this Wei Yin Che Chen is. Yeah. Um, Jacoby Ellsbury with the Yankees, Jordan Zimmerman with the Tigers, and of course the Pujols deal, Miguel Cabrera, and then Chris Davis. I, I, I would say Chris Davis is probably the worst one. Yeah. But, well, you know, obviously Pujols is the worst one. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's pretty bad to, pretty to bad. me that and I don't know, they rank him number three, uh, you know, but, you know, as, as you look at these guys, <laughs> the thing is, with the exception of uh, Chen, like you said, I, I guess I don't, I'm not sure. Maybe I just don't know enough. 6.59 ERA. Um, and he and he had uh, what, 22 million dollars on his on his deal but um with with the exception of that guy who i don't know very well all the other guys on this list are probably headed for the hall of fame yeah isn't that funny you know what i mean i mean you know miguel Cabrera. you can't well maybe not jordan zimmerman yeah and may, uh, chris davis yeah, yeah i don't in, know in 2019 uh, zimmerman went one and 13 with a 6.91 era and 23 starts yikes yeah no he's probably not ellsbury's but, probably not yeah if i had to guess I, I don't know as far as far as you know worst contract moves uh you know this year for the cubs it's it's the contract that didn't get tendered <laughs> You know, I mean, you've got yeah. you've got Kyle Schwarber in Washington, and who's to say he was going to do the same thing in Chicago? But uh, you know, you had indications that he was. I mean, here you, here's a guy who who works his way back from a knee injury to make an appearance for you in the World Series and hits the ball in key situations, and and you know has some of the biggest hits, you know, and home runs. Uh, in the postseason for the Cubs, and you just non-tender him. We, we let him yeah. go for nothing. Yeah, nothing. We didn't get anything in return. What? I. I guess I'd have to look at the exact details, but I don't think we got anything for him. Yeah, that, that's that's bad business. <laughs> this guy's I'd got say. a World Series ring. He's got power. He's clutch. You can you can walk. What? Who does that? Yeah. I don't know. The Chicago Cubs. Yeah. Uh, well, I'd say the Cardinals are right there with you. Um, I know it's not a contract. I, I there there are several moves, and we talked about this before that the Cardinals have made that are pretty head scratching, especially considering what the how their club is built which it's built with veteran leadership like it's built with older guys i mean what you right. what, say what you want to about it uh, i mean i know we have dylan carlson harrison bader tyler o'neill and that might be the next generation of uh cardinal players which dylan carlson gives me a lot of optimism because i think his deep i mean i think he's just a really all-around good player but wainwright yachty uh, Goldschmidt's 33. Arenado, I think, is 30. I think I said he's 31 in our last episode, but he's just 30 years old and has an option to leave after this year if he wants to. Uh, so with all that being said, it's very mm -hmm. curious that the Cardinals basically did the same thing with Marcelo Zuna because they he they offered him, they extended him a qualifying offer of, a, I believe, 19 something million, which is not nothing. But then the Braves signed him for just, I think, 0.2 or 0.6 million more on a $1 million or a one year deal. Right. And at the time, the, the Cardinals were a team that struggled offensively and had a lot of op, outfield depth, but they didn't have a guy like Marcelo Zuna and Ozuna was one of the better hitters on the team. That was before Goldschmidt and before Arenado came. Right. Uh, and so it was just a very curious decision to not sign that guy when you've right. signed a guy and I'll go ahead and say that, say it, it's a bad contract. Now there's a, been a lot of bad contracts recently with the Cardinals, 
Matt Carpenter is a terrible contract. Right. right. I mean, you got, yeah, you got one great year out of him, but aside from that, it's been a lot of average, you know, right. a lot of average. And for a guy that you expected to be hitting third lead off in important situations, important roles in the lineup. Uh, and really he's, it's really kind of awkward to see now as a Cardinals fan, knowing sure. what that guy was and now knowing what his role on the team is and right. knowing, cause I jokingly put in the show sheet uh, talking about the Dodgers last week. It must be nice to have a $30 million a year <laughs> arm coming out of the bullpen. Oh right. wait, we have an $18 million a year bench player, right? That's really even right. not a good bench player. Yeah. So, so here you go. So now we're leading and I, I was having a conversation with a, non-baseball fan about what's wrong with baseball like mm -hmm. i don't watch baseball you know this and that and and uh, so then i started ranting about what is wrong with baseball <clears throat> and long live baseball it's the greatest sport uh you know uh, still is mm -hmm. uh but but here's the thing we i think owners need to start considering and i don't know how they get around this but i think they need to start considering performance-based pay for their players. You bat a certain percentage, you get paid so much. You steal so many bases, you get paid. And maybe they'd already do this, right? But when you don't perform or underperform, you don't get paid. I, I know baseball is a game of failure, but the Matt Carpenters of the world no, you don't get to make $18 million sitting on the bench doing, doing nothing. You, you're not performing, and so your pay is going to be a lot less, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I think this probably is how it used to be. The problem with that, Mike, is the nine, eight, eight guys out, nine guys out. Right. That movie. Right. Because what's to stop the owner from going, oh, shoot, uh, well, if you win 20 games, then we have to give you a $5 million bonus. Uh, guess what? We've, we've clinched the playoffs, so you're not pitching the next game. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, that yeah. That leads into a whole other set of problems with ownership, right? Yeah. It's like, well, yeah. let's – can we get away with uh, – <laughs> I get that. But, yeah, but, I mean, I'm you, not. You I'm not I'm saying going. you're. I'm not saying it's not a good point or idea to have. And I think that there is some. There are some incentives linked in with the contracts. Sure. But you're right. I, mean, I. I would. And I think where we need to look, perhaps, is football. Because football, those contracts are not all guaranteed. You know, right. the club has, we'll give you some guaranteed money, but you're going to have to, like, if you, if you're really good, we'll pick up your contract. Right. Uh, but if you, if you, we get to this point in the contract and you're, because there's nothing worse. And this is why I think team lower level teams don't sign guys like the pirates. There's nothing that kills a, a small market team more than signing the wrong guy to an extension. And it's right. kind of killing the Cardinals right now a little bit. Sure. You know, they signed they signed Fowler and that turned out to be a bad deal. They signed Carpenter that turned out to be a bad deal. They signed uh, Brett Cecil back in the day. That was a bad deal. They signed Andrew Miller, who was doing nothing but walking guys uh, right. in the series against the Diamondbacks. That's a bad deal. Yeah. You know, and luckily all those guys come off the books and Carlos, the Carlos Martinez deal kind of looks like a bad deal for his, you know, his, I mean, he's gosh, I mean, he's probably more useful in the bullpen although he had a good start he's just not consistent you know i yeah. i don't trust him to yeah. to have a good outing although it happens sometimes yeah but i i think maybe that might be an idea or a compromise like okay we'll sign you to okay albert we'll give you a 10, 10 year 240 million dollar deal but only 100 million of it's guaranteed and that's yeah. still a pretty freaking good payday yeah 